Exciting interview this week on the House of Static with Kilo's friend, LA artist and producer O Patches, whose debut album drops today. Well, because we're kind of doing it already, but we haven't introduced the show already. Right, right. So I'm eating okay. the show shows, by the way. That's what mm. I'm doing. Those are great. I love Three, two, one, go. Welcome <laughs> once again. He's laughing at the house. Two, nope, start over. Okay, Bob, right. you do it. Yeah, do it with you laughing. All right, uh, w- welcome everyone uh, to the House of Static. I'm Bob Smith, uh, also known as the Static Dive. My co host, of course, is my good friend Kilo House. He's there in Los Angeles. I'm in New York. That's the hat. And uh, today we've got uh, our special guest, a friend of K- uh, Kilo's friend Patches, who is a musician, an educator. And uh, you know, talented dude, all in many different facets of life. So, oh, yeah. uh, so you know, Kilo, why don't you do a little intro of Patches, and we'll get going. How about that? This is Patches. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Now we can get going. Yeah. Okay. Um, fine. Get going. <laughs> yeah. No. 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 Um, he went to Icon when I went to Icon, like the schooling, and um, he and wasn't probably, in my class. We should probably acknowledge what Icon is, just in case somebody hasn't watched previous episodes. You know what I mean? So Icon right, Collective right, right. is a music production school in Los Angeles. Kilo is a is a graduate alumni alumnus from that school, alum alum, and um, Patches is, is as well, and now an employee, right? Yeah, I work at Icon now. What right do you on. do? I've never asked you that. I'm like my title is a studio coordinator, but I basically just like. When we went in the new building, like the whole, that whole team that's run by John Coffey, we just like put together all the studios. That's got everything right. Like if the students have any questions in the studios or like new kids who don't know how to hook up to the studios, like we help them. We just maintain the building, like do all that stuff. That's awesome. So, uh, yeah. and is it, uh, what kind of studio, like this, like I'm assuming there are probably a few different control rooms, different studios in the, in the facility, right? There are. are yeah many, many. so there's two there's two control rooms that are like made for tracking like you know live instruments or band mm-hmm. and they have uh, ssl xl desks in each of them and then there's production rooms that just have like apollo twins i think there's 20 or so of those and then there's like a vocal production hallway where there's like rooms with maybe an avalon or i think there's one with like an eli in it if i'm not mistaken and then there's some of those rooms are split with booths so there's like a good mixture of rooms. That's you know? cool. Do you have any yeah. uh, uh, analog tape? Any analog studios? Or is it all digital? No, it's all digital. We don't have any. Uh, I wish. I wish. Yeah. I'm, trying to, oh, I'm yeah. trying to record some dirty hip hop drums through some tape. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I've been, cool. I've been working on a lot of hip hop stuff. So like I'm always chasing that dirty drum sound. It's amazing. I only asked because I didn't. Ex- I expected you to say no, that there wasn't an analog. You know what I mean? Not because yeah. it's just so rare to come by now, and which is funny because we've talked about this on, on our episodes. last episode yeah. yeah you know and uh because i i've spent a lot of time in analog studios because i'm old and <laughs> and and uh and i loved it you know but i've been recording digitally just like everybody else for the last 20 years you know so uh but it's there's just nothing like a, a nice you know big two inch analog tape to you know especially for if you're recording like you know live live instruments and analog drums and things it's just even thing. when you just send send what you recorded through it it's, right it's, oh it's yeah big. well yeah you can use I like that too. yeah yeah like i i had a um we're totally just, just geeking out not really on a no on no, a, no a, it's fine this yeah. is a this is a new format right? there you go <laughs> it's a new format a completely it's us format. enjoying ourselves <laughs> and you get to listen. there you go i had um this is a cool thing you can do it like a, a great way to get like a cheap awesome analog preamp right i did this it stopped working after a while i gotta do it but if you can get an old reel-to-reel tape deck a lot of those old reel-to-reel tape decks are made by like real companies like tiac and and uh, you know and uh panasonic and things and they have tube they, they've got two preamps really nice two preamps in built into the the analog tape decks because that's all they had when they made these things in the 50s you know 
but um, I took, so anyway, I got, somebody gave me one of those old reel to reels The tape deck didn't work anymore, but I took the, uh, the thing out of it. I wonder, is it? I was, I'm looking for it because it's around here somewhere. But anyway, I took the, I took the preamp out of it and I used it as a mic pre for a while. And it sounded great. It's a real, you know, oh. I'm recording everything digitally, but I've got this 60 year old tube preamp that I ripped out of a, a tape deck that worked great. It was great for vocals. Yeah. It was awesome. Right. And then it stopped That's working. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. So it yeah, stopped working. My buddy has a reel to reel with like telefunken tubes in it. It's there massive. you go, man. Right like, I haven't gotten to use it yet. I really awesome. want to run drums through it. Yeah. That's awesome. So, anyway, there you go. I know I a little tape. bit more than our audience and Bob knows about him and his musical career and how he yeah. got into music. So, why don't you explain to the fun people how you kind of started doing music? What made you like, yeah, so I want to do music? Yeah, well, I'm, where, I'm where from, are you from? I'm from, from the East Coast. I was born in Northern Virginia in a town called Warrenton. And um, I lived in like they call it the DMV, DC, Maryland, Virginia area, like majority of my life until I moved out here in 2015. And um, honestly, my dad was super into music. He was always playing in bands. He plays like all kinds of instruments. He sings. And honestly, he like got me a drum set. He pretty much conned me to mow the grass and got me a drum set when I, was, <laughs> when I was pretty young. And I just like would always just sit in the basement and play drums. Even when I was little, his band would leave their like, his drummer would leave his drums at the house so he didn't have to haul them back and forth. Right. And so when I was little, I would always like walk up to the drums and want to play with the drums and sit on them until I could reach the pedals and finally just would like start playing beats right. without right. anyone like showing me really anything. Just me watching them rehearse, honestly. That's awesome. That's how I really got into it. And my dad, like, he was always playing all kinds of, like, crazy jazz fusion music and, like, reggae, soul records, New Orleans funk, nice. second line music. Like, I'm pretty well cultured in music. Like, obviously, there's stuff I've never heard and always stuff to learn. But right. shout out to my dad, for real. Like, he got me on some really cool stuff at a young That's age. cool, man. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. So from there, where did you go? Because I remember some of the story, you know. Yeah, so, like, a, from there, like, I always wanted to play in bands, but no one wanted to play the music I wanted to play. So then I started like. What was the music you wanted to play? What was I wanted? To, I wanted to play like funk and like hip hop and like reggae and like soul records, like like pocket. You know, I, I like yeah. playing like in that pocket. I'm not yeah. like a crazy chop guy or like. I mean, I can do some stuff, but I like I like getting trapped in that pocket. And I right. Like it. Yeah, you. Yeah, I, I. I have my band. I have a band that I. Uh, it's not my primary thing anymore, but it was a band I was in like all through the nineties and we toured around and, and we still get together once in a while. And we're real kind of, it's ska, but it's like funk ska, you that's know? Cool. So it's real, like it's right up your alleys, right? It's, yeah, that's, well, that's yeah. sick. I gotta we check got a sax player, you know, and it's a lot, yes. a lot of backbeat guitar, a lot of, you know. I want to play with a horn section so bad like before I die, I die happy. <laughs> You're like, I just got to do that. Yeah. That's awesome, man. And then from there, uh, I started looking into like, DJing and like I kind of wanted to make beats but like I didn't know what to do and like at that time there wasn't like as many YouTube tutorials and stuff all over the place to just like look up a video and learn right. mm -hmm. so like I got an M like a native instruments like MK2 oh, yeah. right when it came out and like yeah. there was not really any videos on it I had no idea how to use it so I got like frustrated then I got like turntables and I got a controller then I started DJing and like chopping up like instrumentals that I found on YouTube and like pretty much like rearranging things like on a controller, almost like producing it live, if you will. Like right. if you were to use Ableton push almost, but like obviously different because there's only so much you can do on it. And then I started doing that. And then I started getting gigs in DC, DJing all over the place. And then I got, I got like really sick of it. Like I want to make my own music. This is like boring. I'm making money, but this is boring. <laughs> this is boring. And then I just like randomly found an icon on some stuff. Like random, I don't even know how, I, maybe like a YouTube ad or like some random stuff like, really random right and then i just looked into it because my dad was like if you're gonna go to music school you should go to berkeley and i'm like bro that's like eighty thousand dollars a year like <laughs> yeah that's crazy i could go to this for one year and see if i really actually want to do this you know what i mean because right. it's different than like yeah. djing other people's music or like just playing drums in the basement or like having a good ear to like being able to put that into like a record you know what i mean right and like on. to be open-minded enough to learn because I, I went in like empty-handed i didn't really know anything I'm lucky I even got I in, to be honest. That. You know the story the same way I fucking had, five years yeah, ago. Yeah, I had just got a laptop before I got there. So they're like, 
my mentor is like, yo, what's up? What have you made? Like in Ableton, I'm like, bro, this is the first time I've ever opened Ableton. <laughs> opened it. And he's like, what the hell? And I'm like, yeah. yeah. He's like, damn, all right. Well, at least you don't have any bad habits. So like, I picked it up quick. Ooh, that's a good fucking point, bro. Yeah. 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 You know, bad habits. And then it was crazy too. Like I, I bought my laptop off my buddy like cheap because it was like probably stolen and like kind of shitty. <laughs> and this girl, remember the girl? Was that the one that got the coffee yeah, spilled this, on? This guest, at, they do Pizza Friday at Icon, and this guest like spilled coffee on my laptop. She wasn't even supposed to be there, oh, and she and she was like, ah, I don't know what to do. I was like, I don't know what to do either. Like I'm screwed. <laughs> you put it in a bag, right? Yeah. What you did. But then I had to go get like a new computer, and like it was it was like the lowest model, like only eight gigabytes of RAM and like whatever. Right. So it wasn't like a powerful machine. But like it was way better than the the computer I got basically off the streets. Like right. So having that, that and, and making me like learn faster and like not having the rainbow wheel of death every five seconds, <laughs> like definitely was a blessing in disguise in like a weird sick way. That's funny. Here, funny, funny you say that. Up until Christmas when I got this computer, I had still been using my 2011 no computer. Way. All of the all of the music <laughs> that all of you are listening to that I have out right now was done on a 2011 computer that never got an update in its life. Okay. So it literally was the slowest thing. Are you was, still on Ableton 9? Yes, bro. I didn't know there wasn't a new one. There's no reason to look at with... with I skipped 10. I went 9 to 11. I went from 9 to 11. Yeah. Yeah, I just went straight to... Because this wouldn't run 9. And I was like, well, I'm gonna don't do. update to 11.1. Is there one? Yeah, don't. Don't do it? Don't Why? do it because it's don't do it yet just don't do it it's messing up but that's funny you say that because mine bro mine work i still produce a lot of shit including his songs with like a yeah. bunch of lead guitars and shit but he did not want to do anything i still open my old computer and there's certain plugins that i have cracks on there so i won't say what they are but that's what i was gonna say man i was producing an all crack <laughs> plugin there's certain ones that i have on there that i just like don't have on my new computer so i like run stuff through it and just send it back that's funny why do you think my other computer is sitting right Handy. here yeah. open? Mine's on my studio desk right <laughs> next to my other one. So With my hard drive already plugged in. Right I'll now, dude, you right. totally do that, dude. Yeah. That's yeah. it. For anyone who doesn't do music, that's just kind of how it goes. Like when you get in like a groove of how you do stuff, mm -hmm. it's hard to break away. When I first learned Ableton 11, the whole help fuck thing, which is what my name was a few <laughs> episodes ago, was because I was trying to have Bob help me make Ableton <laughs> 9 work on this computer. <laughs> so you just kind of get in your own head and you go, I like what I do, how I do it. So I would yeah. run a computer that if you were not stoned, you couldn't <laughs> use it. If you were stoned, the computer's stoned too, then you're like on the same level. You're like, yeah, what's what up? <laughs> But sometimes getting out of your comfort zone and like and like making music on someone oh, else's computer or like yeah. in a different way or starting in a different element or picking up an instrument if you don't usually do it definitely gives you some well, I remember Which is when cool, but like yeah. I, I mean and then it makes you kind of learn like okay yeah. maybe I could do add some of this technique to my stuff yeah. now like mm -hmm. the stuff I produce on this computer does thoroughly sound different because it's like now. I don't have to sit there and freeze and flatten everything just to hear it and then unfreeze and flatten it. And so, which that's another funny thing I wanted to bring up. Mm -hmm. You, sir, had a very big impact one time in the producer's den on me. Because what did I do? Well, you said something, I don't remember what we were talking about, but you go, dude, convert everything to audio. Like, once oh, you yeah, make commit. The, like, yeah. yeah, no, but yeah. like, I never thought to do that yeah. because I came from logic. So yeah. it's like, Maybe. So, like, I literally think of you saying that all the time because I turn everything to audio, literally yeah. Yeah. everything. I did it because of my computer, but now even with my maxed out MacBook, like, it's a beast. I can have, like, yeah. 27 on the spheres and it doesn't care. Yeah, but, like, yeah. I, I still go to audio because I'm it just, sound, I just like it. I can manipulate, like, that's why I use Ableton, that's right? That's what you said. I you can, can manipulate, manipulate audio more. way better in Ableton. That's why I'm using that right. at all. I mean, that's because I learned all that. But, you know, I, I, I do the same thing. And because even though I'm doing mostly, um, you know, I'm not I'm not making EDM stuff, I mean, except when I work with Kilo, you know, I'm just yeah. doing tracks and I give them to him and he does the producing. But um, but when I'm, you know, when I am recording, uh, I'll do like I do. Obviously, the guitar, the bass and everything are, are live. You know, they're just they go straight to audio. They're not MIDI. Yeah. But um, I do a lot of keyboard stuff, too, and a lot of drums. And that's all MIDI. You know, what I mean, like my drum machine is my drum set is that that I don't know if you could see it, but there's like drum pads on a stand. Yeah. So everything goes MIDI. 
and and I and I play it like that, play it live. But um, and I'll I, you know I'll fix things immediately after recording, like especially drums because I'm a shitty drummer. So like I'll, I'll quantize <laughs> all that, you know, get all that straight. And um, but then I commit because uh, it's because it, it, for one for the same things. It's funny you say that because like you know for years I would uh, you know I would do it immediately just because I had a shitty computer. And it couldn't process because anybody that uh, if you work with MIDI, you know that like once you start putting anything on the MIDI track, the P, the computer really just a couple of tracks of MIDI with some effects yeah, on it like, bonds oh, right down. Yeah. Right. Now, but now I've got a badass laptop, and I I probably could keep everything MIDI, but I right. like to I kind of like to I like the term I like that they call it commit. I use right. Pro Tools, but they call yeah. it, they call it commit in Pro Tools too, and. Um, I like it because you're you're psychologically committing. Like, all right, I'm going to stop fucking with this now. You know what I mean? And now I'm going to work with it like it's a real instrument. I mean, you're you're fucking with it like like a real instrument instead of moving notes around. You know, because when it's MIDI, it's easy to go. Oh, wait a minute. I want. You know. Oh, I was a little sloppy there or whatever. And you you clean up most of that. But if you clean up too much of it, it gets robotic. You know. Yeah, I'm similar to the way you work too. Like I record like bass and like I play in a lot. I play in all my drums on a keyboard because like I'm a drummer. So like. I can program drums, but I'm I just get different results. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff. Right. Because I don't really make yeah, EDM shit. either. I'm making like hip hop records. I'm making pop records. I'm making right. like r and soul. So it's like, I'm definitely doing more what you're talking about. And then at the school, I'm able to use the Pro Tools there, which I've learned a little bit just by working there. Which is sick. Right on. Yeah, yeah, I'm trying to get better at Pro Tools for sure. Pro Tools is cool. I mean, the, the real reason, the only real, real Recording reason I use. What's that? Recording in Pro Tools I, is crucial. Yeah, I well, yeah, and I, I mean, I use it for a couple of one obviously because I do a lot of live recording live instruments, you know, and the Pro Tools is great for that. Um, it's built for that, but um, also just habit. You know, you were talking Kilo before about like you know you get right. into your pro, you know, your your. I've been recording in studios since you know the '90s. You know what I mean? And in the '90s, that was it. It was Pro Tools was the <laughs> only professional dog. You know, there was there wasn't anything else. You know. Yeah. I mean, there were there were other ones that I used at home, right? Like, you know, I, I had Cakewalk was an early one that we messed around with, and and Fruity Loops, which later became FL Studio, but FL Studio originally was called Fruity Loops. Yeah. And well, I still call it Fruity Loops. Yeah, right. Yeah. And and I, and I used acid, uh, you know, not necessarily the drug, or <laughs> well, maybe the drug too. We don't know, or maybe, maybe. we do know. I said, is Fruity Loops better when you take acid? What's <laughs> yes, up? There you go. But, <laughs> right. but I used all, but I used all. All those but um you know i in when i worked in real studios as a not as an engineer as an artist um they always had pro tools you know and i That's did have, the same way yeah so when i was starting to record at home and i was record a lot of a lot of what i do with kilo now like what i do is i record the tracks here and i send them to kilo and then he'll put them into the project and does the mixing and the mastering and everything uh, and then it's kind of what I used to do uh, back in the day too. I would record stuff at home. So I was like, I got to get Pro Tools because I'm sending the shit, you know, I would send like Pro Tools sessions over to my yeah, right. engineer in his studio. So anyway, it's just basically have it. But um, I forgot my point. Why was I talking about Pro Tools? <laughs> I forgot where I, go, how I get, how I get from why. I don't know. Awesome. It's just, well, it's just a matter. It's just a matter, like you said, it's a matter of what you're used to. And I, 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 I'm used to Pro Tools, but I've- right. They right. they got better with MIDI in the re- in like the last couple of versions, right? So right. now, like that's now I do a lot more MIDI than I used to because they're better at it. So like now, for instance, it was it used to be very cumbersome because it was designed for audio. So like when I record MIDI, it would be like you couldn't put process it while you were playing it, and you had to like go and add instruments later, and it would suck, and you'd have to, you know what I mean? So everything sounded like a bad piano when I played it. And then yeah. I'm doing this because I have a I have a piano keyboard in front of me. Here, so <laughs> this is my actual studio. So there's my there's my keyboard. There's my computer. Oh, yeah. There's my rockets over there. So because everything everything you see behind me is actually just my guitars hanging on the wall. But the studio is you know most importantly the pistachios. Right. I thought it was cereal at first. What's that? Pistachios. Pistachios. Oh, there's cereal. Pistachios. No, there's all. This is always here. There's always a bowl of pistachios. Uh, that pistachio pudding, dude. That <laughs> pistachio ice cream goes crazy Fire, too. Bro. Oh yeah, yeah. So, so, uh, so anyway, what was I talking about though? I was saying. Um, Pro Tools. MIDI has gotten better in Pro Tools. Yeah, MIDI got better in Pro Tools, exactly. So you, when you add a track, you say it's an instrument track, and then you can add your plug-in right there. And then, you know, play when you hit record, you're playing a live piano, you know, whatever sound you got. It's just a lot better. Yeah. I think for our audience that doesn't 
do music production, we should explain a few things. When we say DAW, we're talking about like what digital, is DAW? Stu- digital audio workstation. Right. So it's the program that we're <laughs> using to make the music, right? So there's like we've talked about Ableton, which is good. And like they're all good in their own right, I guess, other than certain ones. But um, but yeah, so it's just the the um computer program that we are using. We're talking about our favorite ones and like yep. that kind of stuff. So yeah, we're this, not, is def- this is definitely a studio geek episode we're doing. Right. <laughs> we all love- fun. I love, love it. it. But I think <laughs> I think personally, back to what we were talking about before, why we stick in that rut of like trying to stick to our old um fried computers that is probably still drunk because I spilled so much stuff on it. Um, probably with you too. Um, oh, probably. But um, like, I think it's because workflow. So our when you when you get comfortable in your workflow, then you kind of stick to something because it's like I know these key commands are this, and that'll make it happen faster. But what I didn't know when I went from Logic and had to learn Ableton, and then now I use Ableton, is like sometimes just learn the workflow for the next DAW. And it will make it easier for you. Just because you feel comfortable then doesn't mean that experimenting with other things isn't going to make it better. Oh, yeah. No, it's fun. You got to mess around, definitely. You know, Uh, all kinds of stuff. So So, we're, we're, yeah, go go ahead. So um, how do you go from, tell our audience, how you go from never touching Ableton, opening it up in front of your mentor to being um, Mm an icon, um, ambassador of the year like what if if we were to say come to icon go to icon like what what mindset did you have to have to make that big of a jump of success? because in my class if you remember almost all of them ended up either getting kicked out or flunking out or leaving yeah. so like how did you do that um i think it was just like jumping off the cliff you know what i'm saying like i just i left home spur of the moment didn't know anyone out here, never visited, never been to California, never made music on a computer. Like it was just a leap of faith. You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? And then coming here and my computer getting fried to having no money, to having to get a job, working while going to school, my phone broke, couldn't fix that. Didn't have a phone for like three or four months. (laughs) So I honestly think that was like the most insane part of it because right. I had no distractions. I literally just had this That's new great. thing on my computer that I wanted to get good at. I had Preston from Penthouse Penthouse as my Dude, first I mentor. Twice. I had him twice. So like that was Preston, crazy. Preston, if you're watching this, we love you. Yeah, I fucking love that guy. And yeah, it was just crazy. Just like super focused. Knew why, exactly why I traveled 3,000 miles right. across the country to go. Like, you know, my family helped me out a little bit. So it was like, I mean, a lot of it, honestly, come on, my right. family. They did everything, bro. But like, I couldn't fuck up, you know what I mean? Right. There was only one there was only one option and I didn't have a plan B cuz I didn't want to use it and like mm-hmm. you know I could have gone to college and played lacrosse and all that and done sports and all that shit but like I just was burnt out, didn't want to do that. So I just like well, was patient. I, love, and it I out. love the I love the fact that like you know your you know you had you, you didn't know anybody, you didn't have any money, right, and you didn't right. have a phone. Like, all those things worked to your advantage. You just said, yeah. fuck it, I'm all in. You know? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, I That's really think time. that that is one route to success if, um, you know, like, if you, any of you are doing music now or you want to do music, one way to do that is kind of like the saying, like, down with your demons. Like, if you can embrace the shit things that are happening, you can like make yourself do what you really want to be doing because he's like living the fucking dream right now. There's a positive in every situation. Exactly. So like, and like just kind of something Bob talks about a lot on the show is like being like a leaf on the stream. Right. So it's like knowing like he's, he's like, I know I'm at icon, you know, this is what I want to do. My phone got broke. Fuck it. You know, my computer's broke. Fuck it. Like, I got to do all this other work and still graduate because I don't know about the fail out rate now at ICOM, but when we went, dude, like, I started with over 20 people in my yeah. class and we ended with five, yeah. I think. Yeah, that's crazy. Like, awesome. That's, crazy. that's either getting kicked out, not being able to cut it, or failing out. Right, right. So it's like, 
And yet he had it harder than 90% of the people in my class that kind of just right. at yeah. the party. Monday. I feel like living across the street at Icon Manor, like some of the kids just kind of took it as like oh, a yeah. frat house. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, like it's just a party. We're at college. But people right. like me and him who are sitting here talking about our new music with you right now, like we didn't think of it as going to college. It was like, this is what we want to do. And this is my one shot. Right. Yeah. At least that's how mm-hmm. I felt. I'm yeah. not going to put words in your mouth, yeah. but like. There was so yeah. many reasons I should have had to go home and all that, you know, and most people would have thought like, oh, you're like, you're like down, like you're poor, like you don't have nothing. But it was like, I was still rich and like my, right. my, my mind and like what I wanted. I knew I had already like envisioned what was going to happen. And now I'm almost like living it. And it's honestly just the beginning, but it's like, it's crazy to see these things happen right before your eyes that I've thought about during those times when I was going to school. That's fantastic, man. Right. And you one know, thing. And, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, no. Well, I was I was uh, I was just going to say when you were talking about the, um, you know, the experience of going to school and like everybody else, you know, basically most people failing out because uh, just the people like I did when I was in college, part of their ass off and failed out. Right. So <laughs> uh, and I just say I just think it's. um. Well, yeah, you know, like I, I think that you're, you know, I think that probably the fact that it's a year long, it's you know, like you've got to like when you get to college, if you go to like a four year school, that's a long ass time, four years. You know what I mean? So you're not right. thinking, yeah. you're not even thinking about the end. You're just like you're there right. and you're thinking about like partying down with your friends because hey, we're in college now. But you guys got there and you had a, a singular focus and you had a one year program, so you had like you had you know you could see the end of the tunnel. You know what I mean? You could see the light at the end of the tunnel. You just had to get there. Now, oh, no. There was no light sometimes because it was pretty <laughs> fucking hard, like, for especially for people not with our mindset. It was like, why do I want to sit here and learn how to play the piano when I want to write trap beat? Right. But, I mean, I did it. You yeah. know, he did it. Like, we had to take songwriting classes where we had to sing into the mic. Remember that shit? Like, yeah, and you had and, to play it in front of your class. Yeah, dude, and just stuff <laughs> That's awesome. that we, most awesome. kids were like, I don't want to do this. I remember some guy got kicked out because he was like, fuck you, Gary. Like after, and he forgot to turn his mic off and he played it in the middle of class. Uh, yeah. Remember? So it's like, you know, the, having the mindset of like having a single focused mind like myself mm-hmm. or and probably Padgett's like, is like, this is what I want to do. I'm going to try. And, and one thing I was going to say about earlier is, or actually to Pat is like, you don't always have to have that vision in your mind and know you're going to get it as long mm-hmm. as you try. Cause a lot of the things I've succeeded in, I shouldn't, I shouldn't be a drummer with one hand. <laughs> like it just shouldn't be a thing. And I couldn't envision it, but I didn't give a shit. Right. You know, and I've talked about that on the show before. It's like, okay, maybe you're sitting there today and being like, I don't know how I could ever be a producer or a singer or an artist or like right. whatever you want to be. Just fucking try because you never know until you try. Right. Yeah. I mean, and and yeah. and, and, and and dispensing of that sort of mentality of that, like I can't ever do that. I can't, or I like, or even even thinking about that that like you know the potential failure or whatever. It's more you know, like that's you mentioned the leap on the stream thing. That's you know, that's not, and it, and it is something I you know that I've mentioned a lot, and it's something that it's my kind of philosophy or living. But it isn't really. It's not like just be passive and like whatever right. happens happens you know what i mean like it's it's acknowledging where you are and being part of the universe as it flows you know what i mean and and right. but you know what i mean and, and as as patches you were saying like you know you're you're there you're in it so just you know jump on the leaf and and ride the ride you know what i mean and, and yeah. be part of it be an active participant in that in in that thing but you know but the other kids, the other guy, well, adults, but I mean, the other people in the cl- in school were, you know, they were trying to swim upstream or trying to jump out of the street. You know what I mean? They were, they weren't going with they it. Were like, trying I'm, to not learn to yeah. Yeah. I'm not a right. singer, you know, like, come on. I'm definitely not a singer. I had to get drunk every single time to record my song. <laughs> like, oh, every fucking time I would write the chorus and the melody and get wasted as fuck and just sing as good as I could because I sound drunk anyways, yeah. sober. So I could get away with that. But I did it, right? And I right. now I can, you know, coach Christian, who we're working working right. with right now, and stuff like. Even though I can still not sing worth the fuck, 
I know how, and I think that's why we were you know how to use, here, right? right? You know, you know how to use a mic. You know how to, how do you sing right. into a mic? How do you play? Deliver a, deliver a demo where they can like capture the idea and exactly. be like, I see what you're trying to do here. You know what I'm saying? Right. And they can lock that melody in because they're a gifted singer. Yeah, exactly. Well, exactly. Sure. We just did that, right? I mean, because I'm not a gifted oh. singer. I'm an okay singer sometimes. Oh, and, okay. <laughs> I'm an okay singer. Box. But um, but Christian, the kid that we're doing a song with, is a great singer. And so I did that. I did exactly what you're saying. So I record, I wanted him to sing, right? So I want, I want to show him how I wanted him to sing it. So I recorded a demo of myself, you know, doing it. And I had no intention of being the real, except Kilo did some crazy shit with he it. Got, so. He did a demo <laughs> then I drank pre-workout and forgot to work out. And then by the morning time, there was a very deep and very big sounding Bob that yeah. sounded <laughs> fucking awesome. We, because we, I we, looked at my like, turned out on a... Mm, yeah, we ultimately I, called the character Black Cash because I sound like a black yeah. Johnny Cash. That's, that's, that's so hilarious. It would be great. So yes. black, we've got a version but, of Black Cash singing singing. But the point is, like he did, because it's a it's a it's a re reimagining of Wake Me Up that we're doing. Nice. Like and so like he sang the melody and stuff, so it was in key somewhat but he didn't know the song perfectly yeah and he just did it so that i could format writing everything in yeah. the right way and stuff and then it turned into this awesome thing that if we put that version out it would be good right <laughs> yeah. you know so it's like we learned that kind of stuff sometimes mm. um i like to tell people like you need to make being outside your comfort zone your comfort zone like once you right reach on. a place where being outside of your comfort zone and where you feel the most comfortable, which <laughs> sounds yeah. like an oxymoron, but it it that's where success starts. Yeah. You know, when because everybody wants to be comfortable, right? And if you make it a routine to routinely put yourself in a place where you don't feel perfectly comfortable mm -hmm. in that scenario, I mean, amazing things can happen where like you're writing shit like our song in Bowtie Funk, where it's yeah. just like that song is insane because we did nothing right during that song That's ever right. at all. Right. Everything we possibly did, but it's amazing, right? But it's only because we were never in like the, okay, we need to do this this way and this this way. Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, I challenge whoever's watching this right now, like find ways to push yourself past your comfort zone. Even if, for, for instance, for me, like, a long time ago, that was like making phone calls because like I I thought I sound like an American Ozzy Osbourne, so half the people can't really understand what I'm saying. So I was like very self-conscious about that. So that was a way of getting myself outside of my comfort zone, calling to order pizza. I'd make my homie I'd be like, get the right pizza. Now. Like, I'll pay for it, you just call. Well, guess what? Eventually, you just have to step outside of that comfort zone and you mm -hmm. realize it's not that fucking scary out there. That's right. And that's what makes you push yourself, right? Because you see, oh, shit, I went this far and it wasn't that bad. Maybe if I go a little bit farther until you're fucking, what, like headlining the fucking Staples Center and you're like, Man. I don't know, how do I push myself farther than this? You know, <laughs> not that I've done the Staples Center, but I'm not saying <laughs> I won't. You right. know, like, because I'm just that dude that just goes, why not try? You know, so, so. So, Pat, I remember when you joined, though, you you were making some kind of like deep house funky stuff, yeah, right? Yeah, I didn't know what was going on. I was just like <laughs> trying to just like figure it all out, you know. But yeah, I made like housey music and stuff like that. I would make beats, too, sometimes. So and what made you go from that to where you are now, which we're going to talk about? Right. Yeah. Where, well, where are you now musically? That, 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 what do you Oh, yeah. Let's there? go there. First. All right. Well, I'm so the single that I just dropped with my homies. Dope Cal and Tadashi, and then our homegirl, uh, Ellison Cole, she sang background vocals on it. That came out Friday. It's called One of These Days. It's definitely more like a hip hop vibe, like more chill hip hop vibe, like feel good. And so then the rest what, of my. What's the name of the, the, the band? What's the actual. Um, it's just under, it's going to be under my name. I it just go by O Patches, O H H Patches, okay. because when I tried to do like the regular spelling, there was so many people with it. It was like a disaster. <laughs> so when you type that in, like I'm the first person that pops up on Instagram and everything. So just O H A. Uh, yeah, I got you right yeah. there. Cool. And then my link tree's got all my stuff, like our, our website for our brand that we can talk about later and all that. So but yeah, I basically we put that record out. It's definitely like a chill hip hop vibe. And then 
my project that's going to come out. It's called PS I'm okay on the 13th of May is, um, it's like very like sample based hip hop, like instrumental beats. There's a couple songs with vocals from dope cow, my buddy Bryce Blanco, uh, my homie chase Jackson played bass on one of the records. I have a couple beats with my boy, Steve-O goes by S my boy Tadashi. So it's just like a, this is a project culminated of beats and all these different things just because I would, I would make so many beats and my homies like, why don't you put anything out? And I'm just like, I'm waiting for you guys to like put projects together. I'm like, put, they're like, put out your own shit. Like put out, yeah, right. put out beat tapes. Look at the alchemist. Look at all these other producers. Right. They put out instrumental shit. Like people love that shit. Yeah. And I was like, damn, you guys are right. So I just started figuring it out. Yeah. That's awesome. That's, we do instrumental like stuff. All, I mean, that's, I, you know, both yeah. Kilo and I do tons of instrumental stuff and yeah. get together. A lot of yeah. what we're doing now is instrumental really. And then with the hip hop stuff, I also got like a, EP that my homegirl Ellison Cole she's she's put her single out the day before my single came out I produced some of that did vocal production on that that's going to come out maybe in June I'm not too sure mm-hmm. don't quote me on anything I don't know what she's doing yeah, I, don't know, but I produced that then I got st- another EP with my with my boy Dope Cal and my other homie MX from Baltimore so we got a bunch of music I got stuff with my buddy Why Not Cordell he makes more like band, bro? um yeah the album the Slave Dog album that I'm in a I play drums in a like more heavier band so I'm kind of all over the place, to be honest. Slave Dog, boy, the name of the, the band? Yeah, with my boy Luca. Our album, The Pressure, came out, I believe, last year, 2021. Right. And yeah, we recorded that in Oakland with his buddy Ryan Ellery. They went to middle school together, and he ended up becoming this, like, legit engineer. Like, that, that guy knows what the fuck he's doing. It was really fun to watch. Also, not just being a drummer, like, being involved in that, too. Just, like, watching how he worked, how, how well he knew his room, how well he knew his patch bay and his gear. Like, it was right. insane. You would tell him, can we get it to sound like this? And he would just dial it in. It was great. It was That's crazy. Cool, man. Very yeah. cool. So I'm definitely all over the place with music. You I got just, a lot going I think, on. I think it's a reflection of like how I was raised by my dad with the music. Like I was talking about in the beginning, he was playing. I would wake up to different stuff every day, you know, and just mm-hmm. bumping stuff on his big Bose speakers. So I think I just get bored when I make a certain genre of music for too long. Right. And yeah. then like going to play the drums, getting out of Ableton, like re-inspires me to get back into box and vice versa. And then making this heavy stuff, making hip hop, making stuff that's more R and B, more pop, more like recording drums for a random person who needs drums done. Like it's just like keeps me fresh. Right. That's that awesome. That leads you a very good question that we always talk about, <laughs> about talking about on the show. Like, ex- explain like how you find inspiration. Like, what does inspiration look like to you? Is it like internal or is it external? Is it drugs? Is it emotions? No, is man. It, you, know, I, you know what I mean. Yeah. Though, like anything. Like, where I mean, did it come from? Literally just knowing that I like made it out here and I'm still out here and I wake yeah. up every day. Like that's literally enough to inspire me. Yeah. Obviously like getting out and, and doing other things and like doing things you like and like getting out in nature. And like, I grew up playing sports my whole life. So I, majority of my life, I was outside either skateboarding or playing sports or whatever. So when I first started making music all the time and sitting in rooms for 12 hours a day, <laughs> I would notice I'm like, why do I feel like I'm in a funk even though I'm having such a good time? And it was just because like, I was so used to being outside all the time. I was like taking away the thing that I didn't know how much I missed it till it was gone. So like, honestly, like inspiration for me, like, I don't know, like certain things get you more fired up than others, but like, bro, waking up in the morning and I see palm trees. I'm like, bro, I live in California. That's so, it never gets old, bro. And these giant mountains and shit. Like, what is that? Like, it's crazy. And then my, my roommate was like one of my best friends. Like I live with, I live with such a good person and like such a good creative and like just a good, like person, like to just build with, you know what I mean? As cheesy as it sounds like. No, that's awesome. No, dude, this is, I mean, he's my, my you know, like, he keeps me inspired. Like we do yeah. music all day. We talk about music, you know, so yeah. we totally get it. That's just like, oh, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah. The one piece of advice Preston gave me because I had Preston the second, the second block and yeah. the fourth block. And I said, like, he said, do you have anything else you want me to teach you? Because I was <laughs> at that point producing good stuff and we we're just having fun. Yeah. I was like, dude, like, how do you be successful? You know? Right. And he said, like, find your people and then stick with your people. Yeah, right. build with your people. Find your friends. And not just people group. that, like, are good at shit. Like, right. people that you really mesh with and that you really vibe with that also, like, yeah. bring bring something to your table. You right. know what I'm saying? Yeah. 
Like yeah, you're average yeah. of the five people you hang out with the most. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. So That's it's a like, way it's, like it's a huge thing with me. You know, my circle is super tight just based off where I'm from and what right. I've been through. So like, right. I just, I just keep my circle very tight. Yeah. yeah and I've done, <laughs> I've done four albums with other producers and she never put them out because they just suck for you. Yeah. Of like, it's all good like, though. But once it just you makes find that one person, right, exactly. Right. I never yeah. would like fuck you. Like it's yeah. like whatever. But once you find that one person or people that you vibe with, even if me and Bob, when we started, they didn't make the same kind of music whatsoever. Yeah. Now we make <laughs> music all, yeah. together. Yeah. Like yeah. Zero percent. But yeah. when you yeah. click on that, like, we both drink too much caffeine every day. So yeah. our brains, our brains <laughs> yeah. are like, okay, we can do this. Yeah. And, and, and to those, you know, new producers or new artists of anything, like, just stick with it and you will find at least one person to think exactly I just I think the young kids like this like instant gratification mindset right. is crazy to me like I get it because like of of how everything's in like taken in these days but it's like someone said like if, if you're not willing to do a 10-year unpaid internship like don't don't get in this industry because <laughs> like it's just the reality of it you know what I mean you got to put in your time and like the people really doing shit in this industry it's a tight knit group of people right like at the end of the day you know yeah like if you really want to be at that level so mm -hmm. it's like i agree with it so i don't know it just takes time even building with the guys i'm building with you know i, I met them a couple years after i was out here so it's been four or five years six years you know and it's we're just now starting to get the ball rolling with merch and putting out music consistently and right and putting yeah. videos together like we just shot a music video yesterday with just me and my homie like literally just the two of us because like you can do it like that now right yeah now yeah. you got to learn how to do right. things like that right. you're not you just a producer. you're not just this like you got to do everything like i had a camera in my hand with a stabilizer and i'm like shooting the music video right, right. and i'm like <laughs> so i couldn't tell you like majority of what this these buttons doing right. shit but like i knew it looked good and i knew that's what <laughs> we needed and he was he's he's really good with the camera so he's like how does it look? Does it look like this? Try this, try that. And it was just right. like, it was, we were like directing each other. It was crazy. Right. And it, it turned like, out insane. Like Caleb was saying before you step out of your comfort zone, you know, but at the same time, right. be a partner with somebody that you respect and trust and somebody that knows what they're doing and, you know, and you can create right. something great, you know, like you, and, and I like that, that whole idea that, that, that idea that, you know, taking your time to get to, to like, Absolutely. you know, cause like, What's you're, the rush? You're, you're right exactly like you, you, you were talking about like how you and i hooked up and uh so we've been friends for a little over a year probably right and and we're three thousand miles apart and we got to be friends just from i i wrote about kilo's music on my i have a music blog and i wrote about kilo on my blog and we started talking and i remember we didn't even do any music for uh, months, I a couple months at least. And uh, he and I were talking. I was we were, were always talking about his music because I wrote about his music. And he and I were talking. I'm like, yeah, you should check out some of my stuff. And we were on my SoundCloud on the phone together. And he's on my SoundCloud nice. and he's listening to stuff. He's like, dude, that's freaking great. And he's like, oh, that's great. <laughs> yeah. So he's like, give me that song. I want to remix it. So I did. And this is, I, I, I told this story a lot in the beginning of it. I haven't told it a while. You didn't tell anyway, this version of it. You didn't tell the full version. Right, exactly. Yeah. So anyway, so we're on the phone. He's listening. He's like, I like that song, 1986. So he's like, send me the tracks for that. I want to fuck around with it. I was like, all right, cool. And it was something I had, it was on my SoundCloud. And it was like something I had done like, you know, months earlier. I just kind of, I literally wrote it on, I was on a plane with my iPad and I made up a bass line on my iPad and a drum beat. And then I got home and I added guitars and vocals to it. And then I forgot about it. It just sat on my SoundCloud forever. And then, and so I sent him the tracks, remixed it. And I, uh, well, just long story short is I released it and I got a record deal because of Kilo. <laughs> and then, there you and, go. Crazy. and he and I, it was a small, it's a small German label, but I got the record deal and it was pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, basically he and I have just been making music ever since last year. He and I, we just, and the weirder, the better, the crazy, you know, we're, we're kind yeah, of right, trying right. to just, here's some fucking crazy shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Either I'll take some stuff that I did like a hundred years ago and send it to him and go have fun with that. Or, you know, he'll write some crazy stuff and then I'll yeah. add things to it. Right. So it's fun. Yeah. It's, it's like the same vibe as me and me and my boy, Dope Cow. My, I, he lives with me too. Like we're roommates and we're like best friends, but like, yeah, I met him through my other homie, Samson who yeah. is a part of like-minded, which is like our collective thing. Right. And um, they oh, were- that's the name of your, that's a, that's a good name. Yeah, so yeah. they, like 90, 99% of Dope Cow's music's produced and mixed and mastered by Samson. 
Mm-hmm. He's incre- He's an incredible engineer and producer, like, and videographer and video editor and photographer. And like, he's a Renaissance man. He's crazy. That's awesome, man. And um, they, they produced a lot together, made a lot of shit together. And me and my other homie, Nate, who introduced me to, to them, we would always pull up and I would produce a lot for him and we would make beats together, me and Samson. And me and Cody were just getting to know each other, getting tight. And yeah, we were chilling for months before we ever like made anything together or before I ever sent him any beats. Cause like I was the new kid. I was the kid who wasn't as good yet. You know, I was just learning still. So it was just, it's crazy how that relationship, like a real relationship builds into something so beautiful. Yeah, man. Like when it comes to being creative, cause that's my most vulnerable state is being in the studio and opening up my creativity. So like, if I can't be like really good homies with you or like, sit down with your family and have a meal. Like, I don't want to open myself up in the studio and create with you, to be honest. Like, I don't care how talented you are. You know, uh, yeah. Like a great example is that is, uh, what was the tune that we were doing? It was low tide funk. So as one of them is this instrumental that I had written a few months earlier and it was a couple of years ago, whatever. And, but my version was just like, it was just bass drums and like some synths. And it was just kind of a silly, you know, funky little thing, but it, it was, it was, I never intended it to be anything other than just, I'll put a song out. But anyway, so Kilo again, liked it. And he's like, let me remix that. And it turned it's not just remix. We turned, we basically rewrote the song and added all these different parts and everything. Oh, and I'm getting to, and the reason, the, the reason I bring it up is um, you mentioned the trust and like, you're just being, feeling comfortable with somebody, being friends with somebody first and then feeling comfortable enough to be creative with them. The, the, there was one point in the song we were pretty much done with it and Kilo's like I really wish we had some kind of like vocal on there like a female vocal just kind of oh chanting or something <laughs> so, yeah you can see where it's going right so the only people I are him, and I'm the only one that sings so so I was like all right I'll do a vocal <laughs> track so I made this like basically five minutes of me sounding it's completely crazy, fucking insane I mean like you know whoo you know, like like singing like high operatic yeah. vocals, and uh, of course he uses the whole thing. But the entire <laughs> thing is the back layer of the back. Yeah. tons of reverb. Yeah. you can't even really Watch hear that bitch out. Yeah, <laughs> it, 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 it exactly. Builds up the whole track. But he, I think what you're bringing up is he yeah. was like, well, he's it. my friend. Yeah, I mean, like I would not exactly if this wasn't a dude that I like, I loved. You know what I mean? I wouldn't right. make a fool of yeah. myself for five minutes and go, here you go. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Listen to this crazy but shit. then, it, but then exactly. you see like it works out and it, added it works out great the- exactly yeah. that trust that trust and that friendship is a huge important part of that of the whole creative process you know that's where really you can really open it up in the studio and get really really like to where it's like it's the ideas aren't coming out of you they're like come they're like going through you you know they're coming from another right. place that's right that's when you tap like into like the, the real flow. shit that's right like we've been doing that recently, actually, one of the new songs we're doing. Um, the song started off as this crazy hard self thing I did. And then he decided he was going to put guitar to it. Then the next day I had taken all my leads out and it was a song with like crazy. a hard, a hard-ish style drum with guitar. <laughs> then he was like, okay, dope. I was like, give me some leads for that. Right. Yeah. So then he gives me these leads with like just a lead, a piano, and like an organ. Then the next time he hears it, there is no more guitar. Right there's just the piano, the <laughs> organ, and the and the lead. <laughs> then the ending of it, which is what's going to come out, has the last, like the mm-hmm. third, um, the third chorus is the guitar part. All of that was written based off of each other, but it was never in my brain supposed to be it, together. It's, but it's, then it turned into crazy. a really good song. We've made some. You know, cool, like, you know, I don't even know what style insane. of music we're making now. It's a, well, the stuff we made is really bizarre, but it's all of it. I it love is. It. And, he, and he heard um um uh, what's that song called? Uh, uh, love for um, Liberty is that the? Love yeah. for Liberty. Yeah. You play, what playing low type funk. Tell you, what I, I didn't hear low type tell, funk. Oh, I'll show you that. Today. Yeah, low type funk. What I didn't tell you about Love for Liberty is we decided one day I was going to be the one that started the track, right? Because yeah. he usually starts it. And so, so as we're sitting over there talking about it, I'm I'm plucking in the notes. I'm not listening to it. I'm not. There's no click on. There's. It's not even played. It's like throwing That's a dartboard at a piano. You know? the song. That's literally the the melody That's the sick. song is based off of was mm-hmm. me just pushing notes that I know I like. And the midi just went in and just trusting. 
And he said, <laughs> and like, and he, he was like, he's like, I just did, I forgot, I just did a D and an F. What's another note I could do that would be in key? And I was like, a D, uh, a, a. D sharp and an F. <laughs> yeah. Right, an F yeah. sharp, a D sharp, and a D is what it was. Right, and he was right, like, what, I was like, what with one more note that'll be in yeah. that key? He told me the note, that's the end of the phrase. I just punch it in, <laughs> yeah. never change it. It is still the main lead sound. It's, it's a cool lead. lead. It's a cool ass like, lead. Uh, it's like being in that zone is where where you really thrive though where it's like you just yeah. trust the process i've done shit like that and it didn't work but the process is hearing it and seeing where it ends up you know right don't, I mean, that's another one too like you're not always gonna like sit down and, and make a fucking smash you're not always gonna sit down and have like a fucking session like you expected which you should never have expectations right. going into no a session that's just dangerous that's how you like let yourself down and get in like weird funks it's like nice. i have sessions all the time where like I don't really care for what I did or whatever. But then six months later, I hear some shit, grab that session, pull something out of it and reuse it. And then it like adds to something else. So it's like everything you're doing is is snowballing into like what you become and like what you make and what happens. And it should be fun the whole time. I mean, they they call it it playing for a reason, you know, it's a play. It's a good time, man. You know, you should. Yeah, go in and 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 you know, and like you said, not every not every session, most sessions are not going to produce a hit record. Who cares? Yeah. Have some freaking fun. Right, who Record cares? Right. Fun. Have a blast, man. Make some fucking shit and throw it away at the end and have fun, you know? Yeah. The, I mean, I, you know. Yeah, for, like I love what he said about not having expectations, right? Because like our right. audience knows, but I don't think Pat knows the story. Um about my dad one time when I was back in Tulsa producing and I was frustrated because I couldn't write another song and I was determined to write one song a week, right? Mm-hmm. And I put it out on Town Rock, whatever. That sounds stupid to me now, but like so I could write a song right now and then put it out whenever. But um, I was so frustrated and my dad was like on the phone and he was thinking about it for a second. And he goes, you know what? He said, don't write the song for your sake. Don't write the song for the listener's sake, but write the song for the song's sake. Right on. And dude, I it is hard to lose inspiration when you're literally, I say to Bob in every project we do, I don't know if this is in key, but I like it. It's <laughs> always, always in key, but I don't even care if it is in key. No, 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 it's no, just no, like that should be the 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 last thing you worry yeah, about. It you know? sounds right. It's probably right. That's what yeah, fucking right. exactly. Carrie had to tell me because I was so obnoxious to her. I was like, "Is this in key?" Like after I graduated, yeah. she's like, "Does it sound fucking good?" Yeah. And I was like, "Yeah." Then, she's yeah. like, "Then it's fine." Yeah. Like yeah. then just leave it. That's why when I play the bass on people's records, they're like. What gear are you in? What notes are those? I'm like, don't know. I'm like, bro, I have no idea. But I found the root. And then once I found the root, I know the shape to where I can jam on this right, song. Right. right. And that's they're it. like, what? I'm like, yeah, that's, like that's all it is. I don't, I taught myself how to play the bass just in my ears. Right. Like, that's, that's it. Awesome. And, and something, two things. One, one thing that Bob kind of said earlier is something I want to touch on for people watching that might want to do what we do or more than what we do. When he said he was, writing the he wrote the baseline on his ipad yeah. on a plane you don't have to have the newest best shit to start no. becoming a producer oh, yeah. no. that's Anything. right right that's something yeah. that people get lost in they're like well they have this and this and this and i don't so i i i can't start until i have enough money to have ableton and this and this and this mm-hmm. do what you can do i started on logic because it was the cheapest thing and I just yeah. got logic, and then that's what got me. To I used to make beats on GarageBand in sports medicine class. In right. School. Exactly. That, like, that, don't... that keyboard, the keyboard back there is not hooked up to any. I don't record with it because it's a piece of shit. I write almost <laughs> everything on it. <laughs> anything right. I write on piano, I write on that. And anything right. I write on guitar, I write on the guitars. But I, yeah, constantly playing on that thing, it's a piece of shit. I said that's my right. iPad on top of it. I so I have I I plug the this Casio eighty dollar keyboard into my iPad and run it through speakers so I can have a, a good piano sound and I just sit there and play on that thing. So yeah, yeah. you don't need the expensive stuff. You just you know right. Yeah, so I mean but, yeah, there's always going to be new plugins, new things that you can get, but it's like do what you can do at that level and then work your way to where you. I when I started writing music, I didn't write the shit I wanted to. Are you mm-hmm. fucking kidding me, bro? Like right. I was just writing shit, logic, fucking arpeggios and fucking, you know, but like it, it still got me to where I am now because I was having a good time. 
right? right? So, and so, the last thing I was going to say that was um, something that was important was like when Pal was talking about like not working with someone if he, he didn't feel what, how did he say it? If he didn't feel like just like, just like if, if I can't vibe with you as a human, like I'm not going to like work with, right, work on music man. with you. About that, like about that matter, I think it's because true good music comes from a vulnerable place within yourself. And if you want to write music that anyone's ever going to like, you're going to have to like talk to your demons inside. And some of your demons are fun. They're like, <laughs> they want to have a good time and fucking party, but it's still you being vulnerable. And that's the place. And you guys could correct me if I'm wrong, but I think like that's where true good art comes from. It's your you knowing yourself and seeing yourself. Yeah. yeah, just being tapped in with yourself and being centered. And like they call it, they say mind, body, and soul for a reason. It's like, you know, you could have your mind right, but you know you're unhealthy, or you could have you have a good soul, but like your mind ain't right. Like you gotta have they work in threes, you know, they work right all on. together. So right. when you have it all tapped in and you're really centered and you're really locked in and the ideas aren't even coming from within you, like I said before, they're like flowing through you. They're coming from a different place. You right. know what I mean? For sure. Yeah, I, I agree. I, you know, um, I, I mean, the, you know, I'm, I'm a weird nerd rocker. <laughs> That's who I am. I'm a, a strange, nerdy guy and I can play guitar. And I just, my, my creative process is I let myself be those things. I let myself right. be weird. You know, right. I'm a weird dude. Fuck it. Rock on. I'm a weird dude. I'm gonna be weird. You know what I mean? Exactly. Uh, you know, and that's and that's really it. Yeah, just trusting yourself and being being yourself and enjoying it. You know. Yeah. So, for sure. Man. We so we um I I'm gonna have to wrap it up pretty shortly here, but we were gonna because uh because it's it's getting late and I got to do a couple things, but um but we haven't done our questions yet. So well, we got to do the bird. We got to do. Is there anything else you want to say? Oh yeah. Yes. You can literally say whatever the fuck you want. Literally anything. This is your platform. Say whatever. You well, it's great to see you. It's great to see so you. So good catching up with you. It's <laughs> great to meet you. It was really nice great to meet you, to meet you too. You. Um, thanks for having me on. I love the spur of the moment MC freestyle interview podcast. It's always yeah, fun. It's fun. I, I I apologize that we're that I'm actually saying we have to stop because I don't normally do that, but I, I just I do. No, have, it's all good. I have something I got to get good. to. So that's yeah, it. it's all good. Yeah. yeah, just I mean, at O H H patches. That's me. You know what I'm saying? Me and boys. We're at LKMND underscore like-minded. You know, we got a bunch of stuff going on. I got an album coming out. I'm going to have a release party slash birthday party thing. Nice. I just got a bunch of stuff going on. We got merch for sale on our website. We're just like slowly building. It's just the beginning. It's a beautiful life. You know, it's like-minded forever. That's awesome, I appreciate man. you guys having me. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. yeah. Now it's the very end of the show, which I didn't actually warn him about yet. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, yeah. We, we do like kind of, this at all. It's kind of a round robin type of like, Let's go. Question thing. So one of us asked a question. What he'll either ask an industry question or I will, and then the other person will ask a random question. Okay. And then we all have to answer the question, including the person who asked it. And all at right. the end, you have to ask the question. We all have to answer it. And you have to still answer it. Okay. So that just keeps people from asking fucked up shit. I love it. Right? Right. Okay. Uh, who do you want to go first? Well, um, I don't have a question yet, but so it's your turn to ask the industry question or a music okay. question. So do you have okay. one? <laughs> That's interesting. Um, <laughs> let's see. I'm trying to see. Let's put him on the spot. Um, right. uh, well, as I said, I'll, I'll ask a, a completely okay. non-music question while you yeah, yeah. talk about that. Um, okay. Well... Let's see. You said you've been in LA since when? 2015? Is that what you said? Yeah, 2015. All right. Um, how has not about your career or music or anything, but you as a person, right? Your 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 views on uh, you're just you as a person. How has living in LA changed you? Um. Wow. That's a good maybe, question. Maybe it has. Answer that. You don't live in LA. Damn, that was a good one. But yeah. you could talk about. Or have you always been in New York? Well, no, I moved around a little bit. Now, I'd be, I'd, I'm from here. I mean, I was born in Jersey, and I, I, I've lived right. in New York. Yeah, my whole life. On that. I mean, so, how it's changed. I'll, but you know what? I've been to LA a lot, so I'll, I'll tell, I'll tell my version of what LA is to me. Okay, cool. So, so. Honestly, like, oh, man, 
might get in trouble for some of this, but <laughs> LA is LA is a pretty fake place. You know, you really gotta you really gotta be careful who you like open up to and trust. And you know, everyone knows someone who works here at this label and this person and that right. person, and I got this and I got you on this. And there's a lot of snakes out here. You just gotta be careful. And I think realizing that in the beginning helped me a lot. And like how you said, when I told the story in the beginning, that's exactly how you told it five years ago. Right. Everyone back home and a lot of my, a lot of my homies, you know, that are close to me have said like, I've been, I never really changed. I've, I've always been the same, you know, right. obviously I grew up and people like change and become right. who you're going to become. But like, you know, I've, I think I've kept it pretty consistent. That's so cool. I think I, I think I knew LA was, you know, a very distracting place and a very like, mm-hmm smoke and mirror kind of place so like i just from the beginning stayed focused in school and then when i got out i just stayed focused because i knew i had a lot of work right. to do to, to catch up and just to get my ten thousand hours in and just to perfect my craft and and get to where i want to get so i think having a good mindset coming out here is very important for for you so basically the answer is now. la didn't change you because you didn't let it Right. Yeah. Yeah. And I kind of already knew about, you know, fake people and stuff like that. So like I was kind of prepared, mm-hmm. just kind of like people kind of told me and just meeting some people like, Hey, what's up? I like the way you play drums. I'm, I work for this and I know this person. It's like, damn, you didn't even tell me your name. Like or how, or how, or how you doing <laughs> yeah, or like nothing. Saying. It's very like, yeah. Oh, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, I don't mm-hmm. even know if I like you yet. I'm not going to do business <laughs> with you. Yeah. So yeah, it's very interesting. That's cool. So, uh, well, so Kilo, how about you? How has LA changed you? Um, mine is a little bit the opposite of what he said, except for when he said the industry part. It's a little less sketchy feeling than where I came from. Yeah, like, you know, like I don't, especially in the area we're sitting in right now, like I don't feel like I'm going to see someone get shot. You know, right. like if we go walk a dog, yeah. we're not freaking out, but where. Mm-hmm. Like where, especially where I left from, like someone got shot at a club like a half mile away from my house that Christmas, like a few weeks before I left town. And so it's like, at least here, I a, feel safer in that general way, but also like I feel much less judged coming from like a Christian-y place, right. being in a wheelchair, having gauges, like everyone either wanted to pray for my soul or pray for my leg. <laughs> yeah. right? And so being in a grocery store for the first like year or two and having like old people ask me if they can grab something off the shelf for me. It's not something I would grew up around. I wasn't, I didn't grow up around anyone being helpful to anybody right. except for themselves, which That's funny. I don't know what he was saying about it, yeah. but in a, in a different way with you, I mean, some people are the general people that are just peopling. They're really like not, I always say it's because they're on their own hustle. So they don't have time to mean yeah. you about every single thing mm. that you're doing. I feel like people are more themselves here though at the same time. Like everyone's on their phones and shit. And like mm-hmm. right. people are more like, hey, how you doing to a random person on the street on the East Coast? I feel like. Really? Yeah, like certain areas, like you know, New York, maybe not so much. Everyone's on the grind there too. Right. Yeah, uh, you know, maybe I like people not. But I don't know yeah. how you do it. When I go to New York, I literally feel like no one agrees with me, but I feel like the people are more friendly. But no, maybe they're, they're so just friendly. maybe they're just more my vibe and I just no, vibe with them more. They are. No, like New York, like I live upstate, um, but I spend a lot of time in the city. And uh no, New York New York City is you know, people that say New York City's rude or fat, you know, whatever, they just yeah. they haven't been they haven't been there. Right. I mean, because right. really that's not what people from New York are like. It is it's actually a very nice city. It really is. And the people it really is. Know, it really is. It's it's a it's a great place. I love New York City and I oh, love LA. And, and I'll I will i tell my version of, of what yeah, so obviously LA hasn't changed because I don't live in LA, but um I love LA and the one thing the thing I always describe oh, I never said how it changed me. I don't hate people. <laughs> oh, there you go. go. All right. Good, no, good. I, I just like it. I don't know if it's the, I always, I, I, when I get off the plane in LA and, and when I get off in LAX and I just kind of set my foot on the ground, I feel like I lost 10 pounds. I, it's because it's, 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 it, it's just me. It's mentally. It's, I, I like, I don't know if it's the ocean or the people or the vibes or whatever. I just kind of like feel like I just exhaled, you know? LA makes right. me feel like that. I love it. And, and I, I like, and it's funny. One time I was going through, uh, this is before I was vegan and I was there, I was going through an in and out, uh, you know, drive through and 
And then like the dude waiting on me, so like, all right, you know, he I pay him, and he's like, all right, rock on, man, peace out. And I was just like, these are my people. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Right. like me, he's like, you say groovy and rock on. I'm like, shit, that's how I talk. Nobody talks like that out here. Yeah. So I like LA. Anyway, so th- that's the story. So Kilo, what's your question? Okay, I it, do you want me to ask my crazy ass question or hey. my Came as fuck question. You Just you to ask, whichever one you feel comfortable asking. If you were an instrument, what instrument would you be and why? There you go. That's my crazy ask question. Okay. Uh, that's, that's an interesting question. It's still our industry, bro. Mm. Mm. I guess I just have to say guitar because it's the one I understand the best. You know what I mean? I know guitar. I feel com- comfortable with everything about guitar. So probably a guitar. Yeah, I would I would be a drum set because, you know, there's so many different pieces to a drum set. And I feel like I make so many different kinds of music and like do oh, different kinds really of things. Right. That, so like, yeah. I feel like I can relate to that, you know? Nice, right on. Yeah. Um, oh, fuck. I didn't come up with an answer. <laughs> um... I would probably be, oh, fuck. Well, I should have come up with my answer. Something electronic since I don't walk. Something oh, that is go. very loud, but definitely doesn't. So I'd be an amplifier then. Because be like, super loud, <laughs> so I don't saying. actually do I, anything. I just sit <laughs> in one spot. There you go. That is like actually a great answer. answer. That's a good question. That was a good question. Good question okay. and good answer. Right on. Yeah. All right, my question? Yeah, yeah, um, yeah you got to ask All right, you guys ready for this shit? All right. <laughs> no. Would you uh, rather? I'm going to say no. Oh, would you, uh, it's always the would you rather. They're dead. They're, would they're you rather? Dead. Fucking Nick did the same shit to us. Don't you say <laughs> have a million tiny balls or one? No, 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 okay. no. Would you rather? <laughs> you got to pay attention. Would you rather have leg sized fingers or finger sized legs? <laughs> I already do have finger sized legs. So oh, that doesn't on, work for me, bro. Yeah, it does. Would you rather, bro? <laughs> It doesn't matter. The question isn't what do you have? It's what we yeah. have. There you go. What is okay, it now? Right. So leg size fingers or finger sized legs? Yeah. I think I would have to go with finger sized legs. Because, <laughs> you know, I, I don't I could I don't know how I'd play guitar or piano or anything else or write if I had leg sized fingers. So you would like yeah. walk like that. <laughs> <That's gonna be laughs> <great>. <laughs> um I would probably say um uh, Finger size legs, since mine don't do anything valuable anyway. You Your body on so, my It's just like, who cares, right? I don't care. <laughs> what about you, bro? I'm sure you I thought want, about it. I more. want a, I would want leg size fingers. What? <laughs> just you, just you think it's cool? Yeah, <laughs> it'd be cool. Like... <laughs> you wouldn't uh, even need it like, at that point, though, bro. You'd be walking on the floor. I could like be way over there and play the drums. Way That's over fantastic. There. All right, Fair enough. That's a great answer. All right, guys. Well, I, I got to sign off now. It's good. I, I, but yes. uh, I really appreciate that you uh, joining us, though, Patches. This is a lot of fun. Yeah, I really is. enjoyed meeting you. Yeah, I could talk yeah. to you about studio shit all day long, man. Well, we're real, me too. Have to do it again. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Thank right. you for right, coming, bro. Have a good thank night, man. For watching yes, thank you, everyone. Yes, thank you, everyone. Kilo, Peace. talk Peace. to you later, brother. Patches, later. Hey, let's take a minute.